Focus, focus, focus. There we go. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. My name is Tommy Reynolds and I'm gonna be telling you a bit about my backdrops. Um, so I use a company called Creativity Backgrounds and they are absolutely amazing. I've actually been using this company ever since I started in photography five years ago. So um, I'm in my studio right now. I've got an Arctic white backdrop set up right now for a very good reason because I'm gonna show you a little bit later on how I create uh, the appearance of having a gray backdrop and a black backdrop with a white backdrop. So this was the backdrop that I first started with. In fact, I found a picture this morning what my studio looked like when I first put my first backdrop in, which will flash up now. White was a great choice for me to start out with. Um, I love their backgrounds. As you can see, this backdrop looks like it's made to measure, but luckily for me, one of their sizes is the exact um, width of pretty much this room. So this is perfect for me. And I love it because it's, uh, it's, it's seamless paper, so it's not a muslin material, one where you would fold up. While that's convenient to fold up and put it in your car and go somewhere, it's, it can be very difficult to get those creases out. So that's why I prefer the seamless paper because it's nice and thick. And because it's a thick paper, you get a bit of bounce back from your flash. So it can, um, rather than the muslin material, which again would kind of, I guess, be absorbed. The light can, uh, uh, the muslin material absorbs that light. So that's why I like using the paper for that reason as well. Any uh, studio shot that you've seen um, of mine has been shot using with, uh, with creative backgrounds. And again, I love them because they're also inexpensive as well. If you're looking for a backdrop, use these guys. Um, I've used uh, a vary of different colors before. I've used more recently a maize uh, color, which is like this, which is a yellow color, um, which you're seeing now. So I did some shots recently for a clothing brand called Active and Style and we took some shots with the backdrop because we wanted to see if we can create something really kind of high-end fashion. This color kind of attracted me. I thought it would look really cool uh, and it came out really well. I was really pleased with it. And uh, I've also used this, uh, the blue backdrop, which is like an aqua color. Um, I've shot um, book covers with it and I've shot uh, presenters with it, singer-songwriters with it. Um, I absolutely love that blue backdrop. There's a huge amount of colors that you can choose from and the customer service is great as well. So if you have any problems with them, you can go to them. But uh, yeah, so let's get on. I wanna show you how using this white backdrop, you can create the appearance of three different colors. So this is what they look like when they, uh, when they come to you. I've obviously used these before, so I've taped them back up when I don't need them on the roll here. But you can see it's a really nice, thick material all throughout. I just I just love it because you get that nice bounce back. It's very hard to crease because it's so thick. Um, I just really, really love the quality of these backdrops. They're really, really lovely and they're really inexpensive. Um, they're really cool. So uh, let's get straight on and I'll show you how we can create three colors with one backdrop. In our first image, we can see that the background is exactly how we see it with our eye. It's Arctic white. Um, but now we're gonna bring the light away from the backdrop and bring Cassie away with it as well. And we're gonna take the same shot. I'm not gonna change any settings, but we're gonna see that by simply moving the subject and the light away from our backdrop, we can change the intensity of light that's hitting the backdrop to create the appearance of a gray backdrop. All right, Cass, come, come back. So as you can see on that next shot, it looks like the, the, back, that the background has turned gray, but even though we can clearly see that the background is white, and the reason why it's doing that, it's the intensity of, of the light can't reach the, uh, the backdrop. Now, in theory, it's to do with what's called the inverse square law. And according to Wikipedia, the inverse square law is, in physics, an inverse square law is anything physical law stating that a specific physical quantity or intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source of that physical quantity. The fundamental cause for this can be understood as geometric dilution corresponding to the point source radiation into the three-dimensional space. What? So in layman's terms, basically, the further the light is away from your subject, the less intense it is. Sounds pretty obvious, but 
that's effectively what's happening. But the reason why it's called that is because as the light come as the light comes out, instead of just going in a straight line, it comes out like this. So if I was three foot away from you, you're the light source, the um, and I was three foot away, we're at 100%. If I then step, step back six foot, effectively you would think that it would be need to be double the what are you doing? Need to be double the power that you need. You need to quadruple the power so because it intensifies this way so that's effectively <laughs> so what ha what's happening is the light is going f uh, when it when Cassie was sat back there the light is hitting Cassie and then hitting the backdrop no problem because it doesn't die until it gets a bit further on so what's happening here is because the light is hitting Cassie and then it starts to slowly fade out. It starts to spread out and it's nowhere near as intense as it was when it was back here. So it gets to here and then it kind of just dies away. That's why it looks gray because the intensity has dramatically fallen. That's why it created the appearance of a gray backdrop versus when it was a white backdrop. In theory, if you keep backing up away from that backdrop, that will eventually turn black. Now, because I'm working in a small studio space, I can't really come back any further, but some soft boxes or beauty dishes will come with a grid. So this is what I'm gonna put on now. I'm gonna put on this honeycomb grid, which will channel the light forward, stopping it from spreading out left and right, and this will give us a much more contrasty image. But because no light will be touching the background, in theory, our shot, our background should come out completely black. I'm also going to move the light off to the side so to make sure that the light isn't touching the backdrop in any way possible. So I'm going to move that off to the side and move Cassie off to the side looking this way, looking towards the light Cassie, just looking straight up towards the light for me. And there we go, pretty much a near black background. So that's how you can create three different looks with the same coloured backdrop and in theory you can do it not just with white but you can do it with any backdrop but preferably do it with start with a vibrant colour first so that you can bring the intensity down because there's no point um, using a black backdrop if you want to try this in particular. Now you may want a black backdrop um, and that's fine but if you want to try this particular technique then it's better that you use vibrant colours because then you can slowly make them darker and darker and darker. Um, but again, I've used creativity backgrounds ever since I've started in photography. I absolutely love them, great customer service, they're inexpensive and they're great quality. So if you're thinking of grabbing some backdrops then I would highly recommend these guys and maybe you can try out this little technique. Thanks very much for watching this video, hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe to this channel and I will see you all next time. Say goodbye guys.